We're getting a lot of censorship on social media platforms for people speaking out about Black Lives Matter and say his name or say her name. These type of hashtags are being kind of banned. People are going on live streams, speaking their truth, talking about how they feel about the situation. Live streams are being cut off. Today I watched Andrew Cuomo, New York governor, and he was talking about from the time of Rodney King till now. There's 30 years in between. Got Rodney King's situation. That was way back in the day when cameras were not as, you know, not everybody had a camera like now, just on your phone. And then 30 years later, we've got this with George Floyd and nothing has changed. And people will say, oh, but you black people, you're thugs. You're always violent. You know, you look scary. You look funny. You look violent. You must be violent. You must have done something. You must have a record. Okay. You must have done something when you were younger. You must beat your wife. You must be abusive. You must be into some fraudulent stuff. You get the point. Every time somebody dies, it's like they, they must have done something because we need to justify their death. When most of the time, it's just cold-blooded murder by these cops. And a lot of these things have happened and a lot of these cops are still walking around. No justice and yes, no peace. Because see, because we're always seen as aggressive, we're always seen as thugs, we're always seen as this and that. What do we do? We might have a little protest here and there, Put up our banners and then what we're quiet why because life's got to go on the hurt is too much the pain is too much but it's never forgotten in fact sometimes we're not just quiet and that one story doesn't just go away it doesn't just disappear what actually happens is that another one comes to replace it which is why we're in a state of constant outrage we're in a state of constant outrage a lot of things are happening behind the scenes a lot of things are happening that don't get media coverage now i came across this video let's watch it together can you walk us through what happened See how, see how the reporter is just like, okay, I'm just going to start. He knows it's being filmed. He knows he's a CNN reporter. He knows he can prove this. He's like, okay, I got my camera crew here. Okay. I've got everything going on. Okay. Let them arrest me. I'm going to stand here peacefully. I'm not going to make a big scene. I'm not going to do anything. The cameras are rolling. It's all live. Uh, let me just stand here. And he turns around and he's like, see, see, the, see the, the, you know, see the handcuffs. He's like, I'm sure it's going through his mind. Like I'm really getting arrested right now. Like this is really and truly happening. And he's like, get, get this angle, get this angle. Because it seems these people don't seem to care these days that there's a whole camera recording. That's how big the privilege is. That's how far this goes. When you know that you can get caught and not have any consequences. Excuse me, I beg, which, which orders is he following? Just to arrest innocent people just standing by? I mean, <laughs> this is a CNN reporter, okay? He's not out here filming with a, a, a small smartphone camera. He's got a whole crew. They're standing there with proper cameras. He's holding one of those proper mics. Now, even some of these Instagram live people and stuff that have been reporting about the riots and stuff they're not holding these mics they don't have these cameras like he's quite obviously a reporter which orders exactly were you were you following like i'm trying to understand i, do, I just don't get it what orders were they following he's just standing there he's not even doing anything even if he was just a bystander taking pictures and videos just to show people how how the situation 
really is because i'm be getting all my information from all these instagrammers people tweeting and stuff like that, all the social media people people like youtubers and stuff like that because the news sometimes it's sometimes it's fake news sometimes it's very filtered very watered down but from people on the ground normal actual people you can get the real real so even if it was one of those what orders were they following are we gonna get an answer to that let's see People are now having the audacity to do things in broad daylight. Broad daylight. People don't care. Okay. When I say people, I mean these cops. They don't care. They're doing these things in broad daylight. You got a camera to their face, they don't care. And that is sad because it makes it that nobody feels safe. You can film this stuff and they still won't care. There's still some horrible people, you know, that are doing these things. They're following orders, you guys. They're following orders, but refuse to tell us which orders these are. So we will never know by what law, moral code, put upon us code to live by. Because they're acting upon orders that we have no knowledge of. We, as people in the society, do not know what these orders are. And so cannot abide by whatever secret rules they have put on us. And that to me was the scary part. They're just following orders. And till this day, we don't know what these orders are. Think about that. Think about that. That is scary. That is very, very scary. I want to take you to the book of Exodus, um, chapter one. And I wanted to share a little bit of what took place prior to the rise of Moses. Um, when I read that, it talked about that the Pharaoh um, became concerned and very um, fearful that the Hebrew slaves were growing in number and in power. So in order to maintain their oppression, um, he put upon them great labor. He put upon the Hebrew slaves cruelty to keep them down. However, they still grew. And so he brought together some midwives and he instructed them that when a Hebrew boy was born, kill him. Well, these midwives did not follow and the Hebrew slave continued to grow. Eventually the Pharaoh became so hatred and, and uh, towards those Hebrew slaves that he made a decree. He put out an order that male baby boy Hebrew slaves were to be killed by casting them into the Nile River. Let's look at America. We brought blacks into this country as slaves. We never intended them to be anything other than a slave. But they began to grow in number and in power, and eventually they fought their way to some freedom. So we became even more cruel. And to keep our black Americans down, we lynched, but yet they rose. So then we used the welfare system, the criminal justice system, to, to keep them down, to contain them, to destroy them, but yet they rose and they're right. Then we built prisons and jails to hold them, yet they rose. And so now, we are doing exactly what the Pharaoh did at the end, sending out a decree, kill him. So until 
We admit that when we wrote this Constitution that all men are created equal, that we never intended to include our black brothers and sisters. Our nation may end up facing exactly what the Egyptians faced when they refused to let God's people go. So I'm going to say this to my white fellow Americans, that the bloodshed that is on its way is not on the hands of our fellow black Americans, but is on our hands. We are the ones that are refusing to let God's people go. We are the ones that are refusing to acknowledge that we do not value our black brothers and sisters as equal individuals or equal Americans as us white men. And to my black brothers and sisters, the racial issues, as I've said, have been there from the very foundation. But why do we see it more? Because there's a shifting. See, us white men have been at the head since the foundation. But we've had a black president. And you know, we've done everything in our power to keep him from really changing things. Now we have another minority rising to the top, a white female. What does that say? Those of us who are white men who have been at the head are now starting to see and fear that we are going to become the tail. And we know what we've done to you. And so now we're fearful that you're going to do to us what we have done to you. But I will say this. I've lived in a black community for 23 years. I've never been treated the way that this country has treated my black American. So I call out my white Americans to say we better heed, repent, acknowledge, and change. Because if we don't, I just want to again say this. The bloodshed that we will experience is on our hands not the hands of our fellow black Americans. This is why people are so angry. This is why they're out on the streets because we've trying to be quiet. Oh, we have this vigil here. It's forgotten about, especially in the media, for two seconds. And then here comes the other police brutality situation. And then we're out again. Oh, there's a vigil, peaceful protest. And then it happens again. That's why this is happening now. Because people don't know how to voice. People don't know what to say. People don't know what kind of tears to cry. People don't know what to do anymore. But I do not say that setting things on fire and looting is a good thing. I think they should stop that. That's not the way to go. In fact, them protesting in the time of an infectious pandemic is also quite interesting and quite serious. But at least that's peaceful. And people can stand there and scream and shout and voice their opinions. Because we still need to be heard. But the interesting thing is, when the peaceful protests were there, News coverage wasn't as great. It was just like, oh, th there's this peaceful protest here. There's this peaceful protest here. And it just shows snippets here and there and go out about their business. Obviously talking about Koro. But as soon as they started lighting stuff up, ooh, nobody's talking about Koro. No more. It, the coverage is all about that and the looting. And I guess that's what people want. They just want people to see that, look, we are hurt. This is why we're doing this. Hear our voice. Hear us speak, listen to us, and stop killing us. Well, well, well. <laughs> the media only has space for so much. There's a lot more that goes on in this big, big world with so many people than we will ever hear about. And so, please protect yourself. Protect your life. Protect your integrity. Protect your dignity. I don't know. I understand the hurt. I understand the pain. But this is just not going to benefit anybody. So many people now, including your own people, have now also lost jobs behind all this looting and, and burning of stuff. How is that going to help? It's not going to do anything in the long run. You yourself are going to wake up one day and find out your city is a ghost city. There's nothing there. There are no supermarkets. There's nothing. There's nothing. The little bit of enjoyment we had left of going to supermarkets and stuff like that in this quarantine period and all this stuff in the time of a pandemic that's all it's gonna diminish because there's nothing out there everything's burned to the ground you call 911 the cops are nowhere to be found because you burned their 
uh, headquarters, no cops, you call the ambulance, they're now busy with other things. They were already busy with the coro and now this has come to add to it you know and that frightens me for the the person who is having a very difficult labor that, that will be happening the person who and is at home and needs the, the, the ambulance to take them to the hospital the person who's just had a heart attack and none of the people in the household are cpr trained and they don't have a clue what to do and they call 911 and it's like uh well you know everyday life is made very hard because of all this stuff that is going on I don't know you guys at some point the way 2020 is going at some point we really have to do something to make it better all of us collectively we, we can't be dealing with racism at this time it is 20 freaking 20 like what the heck what what is going on why are we still dealing with these things we have bigger fish to fry okay the pot ain't big enough for all these other things to be added in we need we need to stop we need to stop some of this stuff is in our own hands. Some of this stuff is in our own hands. We need to make 2020 better because, oh yeah, this is what, you know, the message that I think people are trying to put out there is that if these things continue to happen, these are also the other repercussions. You know, I'm, I'm seeing this as something that could continue to happen. You kill some black person, innocent black person, police brutality does that. Racism does that. People are going to riot. People are going to loot. Now they know they can. This is becoming a very dangerous situation. I mean, 2020 is like a movie where we've not been able to go to the theaters, but the biggest movie is playing out right in front of our eyes. This is crazy, crazy. We've had wars in the past. They were crazy, absolutely crazy, unnecessary, and just horrible and horrendous. This 2020 that we're in right now is like, it's like a secret war and it's a war that has no name. It's just utter chaos. We're having fires at the beginning of the year, locusts, we're having police brutality against black people. Oh, and then all the regular nonsense that happens, you know? And Kuru is just too much. I'm tired, as you can see. So I'm gonna go, as I always say, make time for glorious life. And it's time to start what? Living it right. I will see you in the next video. God bless. Bye. Make sure you go check out my other entertaining, funny, insightful, and mesmerizing videos. I hope you hit bump stop as well on that subscribe button, comment because I really want to know what you think, like because you obviously like this video and learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video, God bless, make time for life.